Audi's A4 needed to up its game in the face of tough competition from BMW's 3 Series and Mercedes C-Class in the image-conscious compact executive sector. It has. We may have first seen this car's basic design back in 2008, but the changes made to the much improved version on test here have fully rejuvenated its appeal. In terms of quality, running costs and high-tech appeal, it's a car that's hard to overlook. Audi knows a thing or two about mid-sized family cars with a prestigious feel, compact executive models like the A4. The Ingolstadt company has, after all, sold 10 million such vehicles over the last four decades, half of those badged A4, a car that's vanquished the Mercedes C-Class in the sales charts and proved to be a huge thorn in the side of the previously segment-ruling BMW 3 Series. Most successful of all the A4 generations on sale here since the model line was first introduced back in 1994 has been the version we first saw in 2008, a car larger and more sophisticated than any the brand had previously had in this sector. It was a big success, but by late 2011, even Audi could see that rivals had its measure, with a substantially improved Mercedes C-Class on sale and a frighteningly good all-new 6th generation BMW 3 Series just about to hit the showrooms, which explains the need for the heavily revised A4 that we're looking at here, launched in the early spring of 2012. With this model, we still had the basic 2008 design, but the development team had taken it and improved just about everything possible without creating an all new car. Hence, an A4 that was smarter, better equipped, safer, better to drive, and more fuel efficient. An A4 fully ready to square up to the best that its rivals had to offer. An A4 with an even bigger dose of Vosbrung Dirk Technik. Get behind the wheel and even blindfolded, you probably guess you were in an Audi. The um, brilliant driving position, the smell of quality, the way that the controls are so beautifully damped, all are Ingolstadt giveaways. But when this modern generation A4 was first introduced in 2008, the company knew it had to go further. Class leadership would require a conscious effort to reward owners as much out on the road as in the driveway. Now the engineers knew of course that uh, this car's front wheel drive layout could never reward enthusiasts in quite the same way as the rear driven setup of a rival BMW 3 Series, but they were convinced that it could be made to feel almost as good. To prove the point, they took a completely clean sheet approach to developing the original version of this car and created an entirely new MDS platform that moved the engine back from its usual point just in front of the front axle to a point just behind it. Now, since the engine is the heaviest part of any car, that change was pretty significant, uh, spreading this car's weight more uniformly across both axles. Now, that improved handling response, while the longer wheelbase necessary to effect the change also enhanced ride quality. Of course, whatever you do, you can't change the laws of physics, and a BMW 3 Series will still feel more responsive if you're out to rival Lewis Hamilton on your favourite back road. But the differences to this A4 aren't great, and the suppler ride that you get with this Audi, providing you don't burden it with huge wheels and stiff suspension, will be preferable for many. You can improve it still further if you opt to pay extra for the chassis with damper control setup that enables you to match the ride to the mood that you're in and the road that you're on. And you can make this even more of a driver's car by specifying it with the option of Quattro four-wheel drive, tempting indeed given our wintry climate. Now normally this system uh, distributes power primarily towards the rear, but if conditions demand it, it can redistribute torque towards the front at lightning speed. And uh, if you uh, are fortunate enough to have the sport differential that's available on the top 3 litre TDI and S4 models, then a torque can even be distributed from side to side at the rear, firing you from corner to corner. So far, so good. But what let the side down a bit on the original version of this car was the steering. 
uh, with the result that this revised version gets an all-new high-tech electromechanical steering setup supposed to improve driver feedback, though that's still not this car's strongest suit. You can improve it by paying extra for dynamic steering, but it might be better just to opt for the Audi Drive Select system. It's a setup that at relatively small extra cost really does improve the way that this car responds, the way it feels on the road. Drive Select improves steering feel uh, along with end the engine management, the throttle response, the change parameters of the auto gearbox if you've got one, even the air conditioning in line with your selection between various driving modes. Uh, you've got uh, comfort, auto, dynamic, and even efficiency settings. Um, and um, if you paid extra for the chassis with damper setup, then those settings will also alter the, uh, the ride quality in line with the choices you've made. Under the bonnet, if you're an enthusiastic driver, less is probably more. With less weight to carry around, lower order two-wheel drive petrol and diesel models feel more agile and more responsive than their three-litre stablemates. I also prefer the six-speed manual gearbox I'm using here to the auto-only setup that you're limited to uh, in pricier variants. In the petrol TFSI lineup, um, I'd suggest that you ignore the entry-level 120 PS 1.8 litre TFSI unit and go straight on to the engine that Audi has spent most time on improving in this revised range, the 170 PS 1.8 TFSI. It's lighter, more fuel efficient, pokier and torquier, with the result that rest to 60 now takes just 8.1 seconds on the way to a top speed of 143 miles an hour. Beyond that, there's the venerable 211 PS petrol 2 litre unit borrowed from the Golf GTI, available with either two or four wheel drive. And for me, uh, an A4 2 litre TFSI, uh, capable of getting from rest to 60 in just 6.9 seconds on the way to 149 miles an hour, is pretty much the perfect package. 2 litre TDI diesel models offer uh, reasonable levels of performance too. The lower powered 136 and 143 PS variants able to get to 60 in around 9 seconds from rest on the way to a top speed in the region of 130 miles an hour. While if you go for the slightly higher powered 2 litre TDI A4 versions, uh, that's uh, with either 163 PS or as in this case 177 PS, you're looking at rest to 60 in around 8 seconds on the way to a top speed of around 140 miles an hour. That leaves only the 3 litre models, two of them diesel powered. 3 litre TDI buyers choose between a 204 PS uh, version with two wheel drive and an 8 speed Multitronic automatic transmission. It's a surprisingly efficient package or a very tempting 3 litre TDI Quattro model with 245 PS and a 7 speed double clutch uh, S-Tronic automatic gearbox that, and it's a car uh, that's capable of rest to 60 in just 6.1 seconds on the way to an artificially limited top speed of 155 miles an hour. It's quick or at least you'll think it is until you try the flagship S4 Quattro model, uh, a car that has a supercharged 3 litre TFSI petrol engine. It's a six cylinder unit that's as quick as any V8, uh, making rest to 60 in just five seconds. Aesthetic excess isn't a very Audi trait, and it's certainly not much in evidence here. Owners looking to preserve the values of existing post-2008 generation A4s will be delighted to find that there are few visual changes, uh, the differences being limited to mild cosmetic updates of a front end that now features a wedgie set of A6 style headlamps positioned either side of a smarter single frame front grille and above a restyled bumper and revised air intakes. Move down to the back of the car, past what will likely be a smarter set of alloy wheels, and you'll find a set of revised tail lights with optional LED brilliance sitting above a uh, sleeker bumper and a revised rear diffuser. But as ever, it's the cabin that will really sell this car. Everything beautifully finished, clear and elegant. 
With this revised model, there are smarter steering wheel designs, beefier column stalks, clearer white illuminated instrumentation, uh, nice chrome uh, inlays, uh, smarter buttons, uh, nicer seat upholstery, and a whole range of fresher finishing touches like um, uh, oak inlays you can get that really give the cabin a classy air. The well-regarded MMI infotainment system is now easier to use with fewer buttons and more logical menus. You can even now input a seven-digit postcode into the sat-nav, thank goodness. Now through it you can now access a whole raft of online options, everything from Google Earth mapping to in-car internet access. <laughs> In the rear, as usual with this class of car, it's comfortable enough for uh, a couple of adults, but a bit of a squash if there are three of you, the unfortunate middle occupant, having to sit legs splayed out either side of a rather large transmission tunnel, despite the fact that this car is front wheel drive. It'll be comfortable enough for three children though. Out back, there's a 490 litre boot that's slightly bigger than that provided in uh, rival BMW 3 Series and Mercedes C-Class models. And inside you'll find the usual tie-down hooks and you can specify a luggage net to keep your eggs from mixing with your iron brew. You do have to pay extra if you want a ski hatch that will enable you to poke through longer items, but unlike our BMW and Mercedes, Audi isn't so mean as to charge you any more for the split folding rear seats that in this case will extend your carrying capacity uh, in the saloon model to 962 litres. Of course, if you're going to be carrying uh, really big stuff on a regular basis, you'll be more interested in the A4 Avant Estate model, which uh, offers a boot capacity of 490 litres and a total seats folded capacity of 1,430 litres. Over 93% of compact executive models of this type are sold from Audi, BMW and Mercedes showrooms. Now, uh, the Ingolstadt brand has adopted the same kind of pricing policy as its two German rivals. So this car sits in the normal uh, 25 to 40,000 pound bracket that's common to this class of car. But look a little closer and you'll see that in most direct model for model comparisons, uh, an A4 will probably save you six to 800 pounds on a Mercedes C-Class or a BMW 3 Series, just to give it a bit of a showroom advantage. Now, of course, the first thing you'll need to decide in A4 purchase is whether to go for this saloon or the Avant Estate. And as usual, the Estate commands a premium of around, well, just over a thousand pounds. Now, if you want that Avant Estate to come in the all-road spec, that'll give it a more rugged SUV-like look, then you'll need to budget another thousand pounds or so on top of that. And talking of, sort of SUVs and four-wheel drive, if you fancy the Quattro option on uh, either a two-litre petrol or a two-litre diesel A4, then if you allow uh, a premium of an extra or £1,500 or so on top of the cost of your chosen model, then you should find that you've covered it. In the mainstream A4 lineup, many buyers will unquestioningly tick the box marked TDI when ordering their car. But such is the price premium to go from uh, petrol to an equivalently powerful diesel, that it might just be worth checking your annual mileage and your overall running costs before going the diesel route. Now, uh, I'm prompted to say that because there's, there's a reasonable premium to go from petrol to diesel in the A4 lineup, as with most of this car's rivals. It's in the order of two and a half to three thousand pounds. And in looking at this revised A4 range, uh, there's a very impressive petrol model now on offer, the 170 PS 1.8 TFSI. Now, this particular variant is able to average around 50 miles to the gallon and put out under 135 grams per kilometre of CO2, figures that until just a few years ago would have been more suited to diesel motoring. In this respect, it's far ahead of direct rivals like BMW's uh, 320i and uh, Mercedes C180 petrol powered models that can get nowhere near those kinds of figures and it'll save you a good well, two and a half thousand pounds on an equivalently powerful two litre TDI model in the A4 range. It's an informed choice then. All of the A4's engines are torquey turbocharged direct injection units and whichever you choose 
either the 1.8 or 2 litre TFSI petrol engines or the 3 litre TFSI petrol unit of the potent S4 or indeed either of the diesels, the 2 litre TDI I have here or one of the 3 litre TDI models. Whichever A4 you go for, you should find your car to be decently equipped. Now, it's a bit surprising that entry-level variants do without things like LED rear lights and a DAB digital radio. But uh, other than that, it's a pretty um, complete roster. So all models get 17-inch uh, alloy wheels, cruise control, front fog lights, um, auto headlamps and wipers, uh, rear parking sensors, uh, a 10-speaker, uh, 180-watt uh, MP3 compatible CD stereo with an aux in point. Uh, it's uh, got a Bluetooth interface for your mobile phone and you can view the controls through a 6.5 inch color screen and uh, alter the various functions via switches on the leather covered multifunction steering wheel. You also get a category one alarm and three zone climate control. Now must have options uh, for me anyway would include things like a ski hatch so you can poke uh, longer items through from the boot and the drive select system. Uh, what I probably wouldn't go for would uh, be the S-Line Sport trim with its lowered suspension that for me spoils the supple ride that I think is one of this A4 model's best features. Still, that's up to you. In my view, the uh, two and a half S-Line Premium might be better spent on high-tech gadgetry the Parking System Plus setup, for example, that can effortlessly guide you into the tighter space with the aid of a reverse parking camera. Or the uh, Xenon Plus headlamps, which can be further refined by an adaptive lighting system that gives you dynamic cornering and static turning lights. With the high beam assistant fitted, they can even dip themselves for you at night. Or perhaps you'd like to consider the MMI Navigation Plus system that gives you a large uh, 60 gigabyte hard disk drive, a DVD player, and a seven inch color monitor that uh, includes 3D navigation. I'd also want to consider the panoramic glass sunroof and the also tempting 14 speaker, 505 watt Bang & Olufsen surround sound system. Oh, and uh, the three seat options as well, that includes uh, a climate controlled comfort alternative. A fascinating extra cost feature available across the board is a high specification Audi Connect Bluetooth online car phone. Now this introduces a voice activated Google powered point of interest search system, navigation via Google Earth images and a WLAN, that's a wireless local area network hotspot to your A4, enabling occupants to connect uh, their phones and their computers wirelessly to the internet. The only caveat is that you probably need to watch your data bill, when, uh, especially when traveling abroad. Safety provision runs to all the expected front, side and curtain airbags, as well as anti-whiplash front head restraints and Isofix child seat fastenings. And of course, you get all the normal electronic assistance for braking, traction and stability control. There are even brake lights that flash in emergency stops to warn following motorists. And an ESP system clever enough to compensate with braking and counter steering should the wheels on one side of the car encounter a slippery surface. One nice standard touch that's fitted across the range is a brake recommendation system that monitors your driving reactions in the first stages of any journey and will prompt you to stop for a restorative coffee if it thinks you're getting a bit dozy. Uh, optional features include Audi Side Assist, which will warn you if you're about to dangerously pull out to overtake in front of another car. Audi Active Lane Assist, which will stop dozy drivers from veering out of their lanes on the highway and an ACC adaptive cruise control system that can keep you a safe distance from the car in front on the motorway, can warn you and prepare the car if you're about to have a rear end collision, and can even stop the car completely if uh, that's necessary at speeds of under 18 miles an hour. Now with the headline news of fuel economy improvements of an average of around 11% and CO2 enhancements of up to 21%, Across the board in this revised 8th generation A4 range, I was already aware that Audi's engineers have been hard at work improving the running cost returns of this model. But 
I wasn't uh, quite prepared for just how far reaching the changes were until I examined the specs of the volume petrol engine in this lineup. That's the 170 PS 1.8 litre TFSI variant. Here's an engine that offers 10 PS more power and a massive 17 Newton meters more torque than before. Yet it's still able to return a combined cycle fuel figure of 49.6 miles to the gallon. That's uh, uh, an improvement of 21% and a CO2 return of 134 grams per kilometer that's a huge 30 grams per kilometer better than before. Interestingly, the entry level uh, 1.8 TFSI uh, engine in this A4 lineup, it's got 120 PS, can get nowhere near those kinds of figures. It obviously hasn't benefited from the same kind of evolution. Uh, perhaps more importantly, comparable petrol versions of rivals to this car from BMW and Mercedes are also in nothing like the same ballpark, which means that if you opt for one of those over this 170 PS 1.8 litre petrol A4, then it's going to cost you in benefiting kind taxation. If you opt for a BMW 320i uh, and you're a 40% taxpayer, you're looking at paying around uh, 350 pounds more a year. If you go for a Mercedes C180, uh, it's probably going to cost you around 500 pounds more a year in benefiting kind taxation. Uh, the 170 PS uh, A4 1.8 TFSI is a very good choice. But it's not the choice you'll make if you're looking for the lowest possible running costs. These, as usual, lie with diesel models. Um, assuming you can afford, of course, the upfront price premium. If that's no problem, then you'll be amazed by just how far you can go on just how little in one of the 2-litre TDI variants, and it's one of those that I'm driving here. Now, um, there's a wide choice of different power outputs with these. Um, you've got the 143 and 177 PS versions that were available in the pre-facelifted version of this car. Uh, the more powerful of the two available with the option of Quattro four-wheel drive. But in terms of running costs, I'd direct you first to try one of the two other 2-litre TDI outputs. Um, both of these are badged TDI-E, and you've got a choice of either 136 PS or 163 PS. Now, the 136 PS model manages 65.7 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and puts out just 112 grams per kilometre of CO2, and that's less than a Honda Insight Hybrid. If you want a little bit more power and go for the 163 PS version of the 2 litre TDI, then you're looking at 64.2 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and 115 grams per kilometre of CO2. So how has Audi done it? Well, the answer lies in a combination of a whole raft of high efficiency engineering ideas, including a clever thermal management system that heats up the engine and the cabin uh, more quickly so that um, an efficient operating temperature can more quickly be reached. More familiar uh, eco tweaks introduced across the range include uh, an energy recuperation system, uh, electromechanical steering that draws no power from the engine at all in the straight ahead position, and a start stop system that cuts the engine when you don't need it when you're stuck in traffic or waiting at the lights. This alone saves around seven grams per kilometre of CO2, and you can maximise the benefits by paying close attention to the uh, efficiency program you'll find in this car's driver information system. Now, this is able to give you useful tips on improving fuel economy as you drive and show you which elements in the car are using energy and how much. Going a step further would involve paying extra for the very useful drive select system that has uh, an extra efficiency program that will focus all of the car's functionality in driving eco-consciously. If you want to go further than that and you're looking at one of the more powerful TDI diesels, then you can talk to your local Audi center about uh, one of the Euro 6 compatible clean diesel engines that have been developed for this car. Now it's this kind of attention to detail that enables even the large 204 PS3 litre TDI to return 57.6 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and put out just 129 grams per kilometre of CO2. And that's way ahead of the 245 PS uh, 3 litre TDI Quattro, uh, that car's stable mate, which manages 48.7 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and 152 grams per kilometre of CO2.
Equally noteworthy is the kind of return that you'll get from the top uh, sporting S4 Quattro model, 34.9 miles per gallon on the combined cycle and 190 grams per kilometre of CO2. I mean, that's not vastly worse than the return you'll get from the still desirable but much less potent 211 PS 2 litre TFSI petrol uh, variant, the next rung down in the range. That particular model manages 41.5 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and 159 grams per kilometre of CO2. Now, it's this kind of showing more than anything else that explains why Audi is now Europe's number one premium selling brand. Um, what else might you need to know? Uh, well, if there's one thing we can take as red with Audi models of this kind, it's that residual values are going to be strong, as good, if not better, than rival uh, BMW Mercedes models. You can also keep running costs in check with an Audi complete service and maintenance package. And insurance groupings uh, range between 26 and 36 on the 1 to 50 grouping scale. There are plenty of reasons behind this A4 model's success. It's a spacious, classy car that's very composed to drive and is fully conversant with the kind of high-tech design and faultless cabin quality that its target junior executive market likes to expect. So it'll stack up as well in the showroom as it does on the balance sheet with uh, running cost returns that with most engines will make it your company accountant's go-to choice. These virtues haven't changed in this fully revised version of what was already a fearsomely competent 2008 generation design. But they have been embellished with the result that even more than before, this A4 feels like a car that's been lovingly and very carefully considered. The depth of engineering and the thought that's gone into the tiniest details combine to further enhance the warm, fuzzy feeling that's been charming Audi customers for years. If you're one of those people, then you'll like this car very much. And even if you're not, you'll find it hard not to be impressed by the way that it systematically ticks almost every box on the compact executive market wish list. It's very thorough and very Audi.